Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video I am going to share with you some tips and tricks and hidden features related to Chromebook. So guys, I made two parts of the same video so do check out the other part, I'll leave a link to that part in the description area below this video. So guys, let's get started. So on the keyboard we have a dedicated button for the search and as well as we have a small icon over here, this is the icon. So when we click on it, we'll get this nice Google new page kind of a view. Using this search box, we can search for normal information on Google or we can search through our Chromebook for any files or applications. For example, if I enter file, it will give me the file manager. And if I enter Google Drive, so as you can see, it is giving me applications whose name has dry in it. And apart from that, you have something like Google Now Cards in the Chrome browser. Simply click over here to check out the Google Cards. This even has an OK Google feature just like in Android phones but currently it is disabled. I will show you how to enable it in a minute. Simply click on anywhere to dismiss that window. So let's open up the Google Chrome browser and this is pretty much what you might have seen on Windows machine or a Mac. So most of the shortcuts that I am going to show you, you might be already aware of that. So this thing over here is called as a bookmark bar or a bookmark toolbar. To hide it, you can press Ctrl Shift and B. Now it's hidden. To show it, you need to press again Ctrl Shift B. So to close this particular tab, you can press Ctrl W and to bring it back or to undo it, simply press Ctrl Shift T. There we have it. Now let's assume we have two Chrome browser windows. So this is one Google Chrome browser window and this is another one. And let's say you want to close this particular window. Then for that you can press Ctrl Shift W and it will close that particular window. And coming to the Google Chrome browser if you want to get notifications from your Android device then you can download and install an extension called Push Bullet. So this is the push bullet and using this particular extension you can mirror notifications from your phone, from your Android phone to your Chrome. So every time you get a message on your phone you will even get a notification on your Chrome browser. Now let's check out the some settings in the tweaks. So to go to settings you can simply press this button over here and select settings or else, or else press this profile picture and select settings so over here you have your Wi-Fi network settings you can add a new connection or disable the Wi-Fi connection simply to disable the Wi-Fi simply select this Wi-Fi network settings and down below you have an option that says disable Wi-Fi select that to disable the Wi-Fi so once it is disabled your icon will change over here on the right corner of the screen and to enable it once again Simply press on the icon over here and select Wi-Fi and select this button that says turn Wi-Fi on. You can do the same even from here. So anyway let's go on. Coming to the appearance of the Chromebook you can change the themes of the Chromebook just as any Google Chrome browser. So once you click this button it will take you to the Google App Store where you can download any theme that you like. Next going on over here we have some information related to battery and the storage. So if you press battery it will show you which particular application or website has consumed how much amount of battery. So if you simply double press on the application it will give you more stats like what are the permissions it is asking for and what permissions you have already granted it. And it also gives you option to stop that particular application or clear the data it has occupied. We get similar information by pressing this storage data button. So now it will show you how much each individual application or website has occupied on your storage. So as you can see Google Drive has taken quite an amount of space on your storage. So once again if you double click on the website it will give you additional information like what are the permissions it has asked for and you have an option to stop that website or application or clear the data occupied by that page. Let's go back. Now if we scroll down we have options to change the touchpad speed and the mouse speeds. So apart from that if you press this button you will have option to enable the tap to click option. If you go to this particular setting you have an option to disable the touch to tap or the touch to click option. Next if you go to the keyboard settings 
you can map the keys to different actions for example as I've said there is no caps lock on the Chromebook you have a search button you can change it to either caps lock or completely disable it and you can even remap the alt and control keys so apart from that you can turn the shortcuts on the top bar of the keyboard to the function keys so you know, all you need to do is simply press this button to make them act as a function keys now you can press alt f4 to close any window so if you want to use the shortcuts instead of the function keys you need to press the search button and the shortcut to use it just like the function key on some laptops if you want to see all the shortcuts on the chromebook you need to simply press this button and it will give you a nice animated view of the shortcuts simply press any key on the keyboard and it will give you a combination in which you can achieve different things going on we have something called as display settings over here we can change the resolution of the screen or the orientation instead of using the shortcuts over here we have an option to show google now cards in the launcher so this is the google launcher and at the bottom we have this google now cards so we can enable or disable them using this particular option next we can enable the ok google feature to start the voice search so let me just show you that ok google ok google so anyway guys for some reason it's not working so for some reason it's temporarily unavailable yesterday i was able to use it for some reason i am not able to use it now so anyway let's move on guys next if you enable this option every time your device is put to sleep or if you simply close the lid it will ask you for your password if you disable this option every time you simply close the lid and open it up it won't ask you for the password if you have security issues then enable it and if you use it in home simply disable it next you have some advanced sync settings so if you sign into a google chrome browser using your gmail account then it will make a backup of all your content such as the apps that you have installed the bookmarks you have your history extensions and everything else if you want to sync that data or if you want to get some part of the data this is where you can do it you can either choose to sync all the information or you can do a selective sync So this is the first account that I have logged into in this device that is a Chromebook so the Chromebook treats me as an administrator so from here I can manage other users so I can restrict some permissions to other users next if we scroll down a little we have this Bluetooth section where we can enable or disable the Bluetooth if we scroll down a little we have something called as smart lock so if you turn on the Bluetooth on your Chromebook and your smartphone and both the devices are having the same Google account then they will try to pair up with each other and whenever your device is near the Chromebook you won't have to enter the Google password on your Chromebook so I try to use it but it is still in beta and it's not working properly so I think it will be fixed in the future updates so we can definitely expect something like this in the future updates so going on we have the accessibility settings the first thing is show the accessibility options in the system tray so I have enabled it so that's why if we press on this button over here we get this accessibility settings over here now if I disable it we won't be able to see that setting in the system tray so let's see the accessibility settings in the accessibility settings you have something called as high contrast mode next is screen magnifier once you click it the, just the screen gets zoomed in let me revert it back to normal then we have something called as automatic clicks so what it basically means is simply you take your mouse and put on anything clickable then it will automatically click so let me put that once again now as you can see I didn't press anything but still the click was generated automatically next we have an on screen keyboard option so once I enable it I get this small notification kind of thing over here when I press it I get the on screen keyboard so there you have it you need to press this button to hide the on-screen keyboard now to disable the on-screen keyboard again go to accessibility settings and disable it finally at the bottom we have an option to reset all the settings in the chrome browser if you just press this button it will reset all the settings and if you want to reset the entire chromebook itself that is remove all the user data and all the accounts then you need to do a power wash so i have already made a video for that if you are interested in it you can check it out i'll leave a link to that video in the description area 
So apart from that, if you want to quickly lock your device, simply press the power button for two seconds and it will be locked. So if you want to shut it down completely, you can press this button on the left corner of the screen or else press the power button for another two to three seconds. And now, and now it is off. So guys, let me turn it on once again. Guys, let me sign in. So coming to the question where if the Chromebook can be used offline and the answer is definitely you can use this offline. There are a few offline apps that you can download and use them. So for example, all the apps in my status bar or the shelf are offline compatible. For example, I have the Google Docs, Calendar, Google Keep, Pocket which stores the web pages, Google Photos which simply downloads some images from my Google Drive and Google Plus account. Next we have this file manager. Next we have the offline Gmail. Next we have Wonderlist which also works offline. Next we have Google Drive which also works offline. and this is a calculator which works offline so using the file manager we can play music as well as videos so that's pretty much it guys thanks for watching the video i hope you found this video to be helpful if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this